<laughs> they don't leave you anything. They take you. They take your stuff. And funny thing about the ravens. I had a sandwich the other day. They opened a little plastic the thing. They opened the thing. Took the bread. Took the turkey. Left the lettuce. <laughs> Nobody eats the lettuce. Not even the ravens. <laughs> we live in a world that takes. But God will use even the takers to bless his people. But now here's another thing for us as Christians. Make sure you're not one of the takers. A lot of Christians opt out of giving for various reasons. I can't. I can't afford it. They come to church to get. They come to church to be blessed. They bring their kids for someone to bless them. They're taking Getting. Many of us were raised that way. You got to get ahead. You got to get a job. You got to go out there and make a living. And our world, our mindset, our attitude is all about getting. And that puts you on the wrong side of God's card. Because God is not a taker. He is a giver. And the Bible said God so loved this world that he gave. And if he lives in your heart, you become a giver. You give your tithe, you give your offering, you give your love, you give your heart, you give your life. And if you still have the taker, how do I get what I need? Where's my welfare check? Where's my stimulus package? How do I get mine? I'm entitled. You owe me. Somebody owes me. I don't know who that was, somebody. <laughs> Bring it on. Okay, you need to renew your mind. Okay, you're not thinking like a Christian. You've been raised in all the isms of the world. The socialisms, the communisms. All the isms have taken over your brain. And you are nothing more than a human raven. Don't mean to hurt your feelings now, but I already told you we don't really care how you feel. Okay, so God's got the raven bringing, bringing meat and bread, a hamburger, a happy meal. Morning and night. Okay, where did it come from? Who cooks a hamburger, puts it out in the morning and the evening and lets the birds pick it up for months? I can see it happening one time, but who just does it day after day? So God was speaking to somebody that owned a McDonald's. You know, somebody that had food. Where was the food? In the king's house, maybe? Because the king seemed to be taking everybody's stuff. So maybe God sends a raven. I don't know. I'm just making stuff up. Maybe God sends the raven, steals the food from the king to bless the prophet. The point is, God will find it. God will find it. God, how are you going to do it? I think the Lord says, don't worry about that. I'll do it honestly. Sometimes we need to figure it out. I don't know how it's going to work. It doesn't matter if you know how. God can still do it, even if you don't know how. We were building our new sanctuary, which we moved in. It's been over a year now. And, you know, when you're building sanctuaries, it, it's, we wanted to have 5,000 seats. And the cost, the budget just kept going, going. And I kept trying to bring it back down. How do we cut this out and cut that out and shrink the budget? You know, I'm trying to, like the movie, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. I was trying to get that to work on. I shrunk the budget. But... It, it wouldn't happen, and, and that budget just keeps... So we end up, it's multi-million dollar thing. How are we going to get it? So we're saying, okay, God, we can't figure this out. We're doing our part, right? We're being wise with the finances. We're saving. We're investing. We're doing all... We're looking for the best deals. We're trying to build this thing wisely. 
but we can't figure out how it's going to work. And yet we feel like you want us to do it. So we just continued on. We just did what we could. We cleared the land. We had money to clear the land. We cleared the land. We had money for the foundation. We poured the foundation and never knew how God would bring it to pass. But as the foundation was getting done, we found investors and they helped us financially. And we moved into that building. And at the end of the day, I think it ended up costing us $65 million to build it. And we paid more than half of it cash. Still don't know where all that came from. And in the midst of the last year or two of so-called economic recession and all the negatives that the world is talking about, we keep growing. We'll have over 8,000 people in our altar calls this year, born again, filled with the Holy Spirit. And pastor knows that's not just, you know, people that we evangelistically counted. We pray for everyone, a personal worker on every person that comes in our altar calls. And so we have their name and their address and their phone number and their email. And we're, we do everything from Twitter them to visit them. <laughs> if, if you don't know what Twitter is, thank the Lord. <laughs> but we keep growing. We keep moving forward. We keep paying the bills, but never really knowing how. But don't get hung up on how. I mean, you don't know how the brown cow ate the green grass and gave you white milk. But you just pour it in your coffee and drink it. You don't know how. You don't know how most stuff works. You don't know how the electricity gets to your house. You just flip the switch. Where did it come from? I don't care. I just need lights and I want to dry my hair. You know, but when it comes to God, how could God do it? You don't know how about everything else in your life. But all of a sudden, when it comes to God, now you got to know. You know how your car works. You just turn on the engine. Pastor's got a cool car. You just push the button. He's at another level. He lives, he lives at another level. Just push the button car starts. You don't know how. You don't have to be a mechanic to drive a car. You don't have to know how God could get you a job, how God could open doors of opportunity, how God could bring you increase to your fund. You don't have to know how, but you do have to trust him. You do have to obey him. You have to be where he wants you to be and do what he wants you to do. So we don't know where the raven got the food, but somewhere he's flying in the food. And he's giving it to the man of God. And for sake of time, think about this story, how it ends. The brook dries up. The brook dried up. Wasn't I where you wanted me to be, Lord? Yep, but the brook dried up. Wasn't I doing what you wanted me to do, Lord? Yep, but the brook dried up. Some of us get hung up when seasons change. Prophet wasn't doing anything wrong, just brook dried up. What does that mean? Time to move. Time to do something else. Time to go somewhere else. And God had another situation set up for him. This time, instead of a raven, he has a widow, a single mom. Oh, great, Lord. I've gone from birds to single moms taking care of me. That's going to look good in the press. Prophet takes last cupcake from single mom. The press is going to love this. Prophet steals cupcake from dying mother. (laughs) But when the brook dries up, be ready to move with God. Be ready to make a shift. Be ready to make a change. I heard someone crying on TV today because their industry has changed and their job is gone. And I thought, you know, you knew this was going to happen for years. You didn't have to be very smart to know that industries change. And seasons come and go. So you know it's coming. Prepare yourself. Don't be foolish. The brook's going to dry up. 